Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen, welcome back to Sunday Morning and the Old Cookbook Show. Today we're going to do a recipe out of this cookbook, the Dominion Cookbook. And uh, this was published in 1899, and the Dominion that it's talking about is the Dominion of Canada. At, uh, at that point, we were still wearing short pants, and we were called the Dominion of Canada. And this is an interesting cookbook, because it is at the very end of the time period of cookbooks that used um, non-standard measurements, crazy non-standard measurements. Whoever was writing the recipe would just grab a cup off of, their, off of their shelf and use a cup. And the recipe we're going to do today uses all kinds of those crazy measurements. We're going to make lemon ketchup. And it uses a small teacup, an egg cup, salt spoons, and a breakfast cup. All non-standard, all unique to the person who wrote this recipe. And another thing that's, that's interesting about this recipe book is it's one of the last recipe books written in multiple voices. Up until this point, and including this book, the recipe books were compiled rather than written. Um, they were multiple voices in a book. Someone took recipes wherever they could find them, put them together, and then didn't sort of standardize the measurements or standardize the language. So it can often be confusing because you'll see conflicting methods and conflicting measurements inside this book. And all of that changed or started to change with the publication of the first Fanny Farmer cookbook in 1896, so a few years before this came out. And a lot of cookbooks didn't sort of fall in line with that Fanny Farmer idea uh, until just before the First World War. So in this time period between the late 1890s and the early 1910s, you'll see cookbooks written in both schools of thought. Um, and I think we made a massive leap forward going to standardized measurements and a standardized single voice in a cookbook. Now, we're going to make lemon ketchup. I've never made lemon ketchup before. I don't even know what lemon ketchup tastes like or what it is. I've never seen it. We're going to make it and see what happens. Um, so I've taken the crazy measurements from the book and did a little bit of research, uh, called some food historians, talked to them about an egg cup. And nobody really knew what size an egg cup was because there were multiple sizes or there still are multiple sizes of egg cups. And so we sort of came up with what we thought it might be and I have standardized this recipe to fit those measurements. And I'm gonna start out with the dry ingredients. So this is essentially a shelf stable pickle. So we're gonna start out with sugar and salt. And those two things are preservatives and we'll keep this um, from spoiling. Next in are mustard seeds. The next ingredient is mace. And this, I gotta tell you, that is more mace than I have ever used in a lifetime going into this one recipe. Some cayenne, ground cloves, white pepper, turmeric, shallots. Now I need to grate in the rind of a dozen lemons, and then once I've got the rind in, I'm going to juice a dozen lemons and put that juice in as well. Last lemon. That took a while to squeeze all those lemons and to, uh, to get the zest off. So I'm gonna put this into the pot with the rest of the juice. I'm gonna clean up these lemons and then we'll move on to the last ingredient, which is this piece of horseradish. So this is what horseradish looks like when it comes out of the ground. It's kind of just a knobby root. The skin is kind of tough. Some people will grate it with the skin on, and others say you absolutely have to take the skin off. I'm gonna peel some of the skin off. And I'm assuming that this recipe, when it calls for horseradish, is calling for the root and not the prepared horseradish that we would get at the grocery store today, which is the root um, essentially pickled. So I'll clean this up and we'll grate it in. And I'm just gonna use a microplane to grate this in, get it nice and fine. It can be kind of stringy if you use a really uh, big box grater. And be careful, this can sometimes be pretty hot uh, when you're grating it. You could get yourself into a coughing fit or your eyes could water. Okay, I think that's probably half a small teacup full of horseradish. So get the rest of that off of there. And I'm gonna give this a stir, bring it all together. Mm. 
Doesn't that look delightful? Now the next direction says to let this stand somewhere cool for three or four hours before we move on to the next step, which is to boil it for half an hour. So I'm going to set this aside and we'll come back to it in a little while. Now the next step is pretty straightforward. I'm going to put this on and I'm going to boil it for 30 minutes. I'm going to put a lid on it because there's not a lot of liquid inside the pot and I don't want it to become too dry. And there's really no indication of what it's supposed to be in the book. But I've looked through all of my other recipe books from this time period and earlier and wherever they mention a recipe like this, it could be called lemon ketchup, it could be called lemon chutney, it could be called lemon relish, it could be called lemon pickle. And no matter um, what it was called, it had basically the same ingredient list, some changes, and the method was almost always invariably the same, although some added vinegar and some did not, like this one. So, bring this up to a boil, put a lid on it, and let it go for 30 minutes. Okay, after a half an hour of boiling, I'm to transfer this to a container where it's going to stay for 14 days. And... I'm going to try and do this without spilling all over the place. So 14 days in this container, tightly sealed, and I'm supposed to stir it daily before we move on to the next step. So I'll see you back here in 14 days, and we'll see if I get a haircut. Um, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Okay, 14 days on the back counter, stirring it every day. Let's see how this turns out. Next thing I'm supposed to do apparently is strain it um, to take out the solids. It's mostly solids. It smells pretty good though. It does smell pretty good. So let's strain it. Now this recipe just tells me to strain it. A lot of the other recipes tell you to strain things through a horsehair sieve, uh, which I think is a perfect symbol of the times of this cookbook. Now I probably could have used a smaller jar. I didn't need one this big. Um, I just used what I had at hand. So I'm gonna have to push this through the sieve to try to get any sort of liquid out. This is a pretty solid mass. So I'm just gonna have to work it through and see what happens. Yeah, we're getting stuff at the bottom. There we go. Hey Glenn. Hey Jules. Hey friends. I have a spoon and a lemon ketchup. Lemon ketchup, so it's not a pudding. I shouldn't. No, do it's that. not a it's not a pudding. Um, I guess there's nothing to do but stick your spoon in and give it a try. Okay. Oh. It's got some lemon in it. And a few other flavors. Wow. It is. That hit me harder than you, I think. <laughs> Clearly. Maybe maybe you took a Glenn size scoop. I did and I took a Jilly size scoop. I did take a Glenn size scoop. <laughs> wow. Okay, so. But that being said, I mean, there's a dominant uh, lemon, the lemon flavor tank. to it, yep. but all the underneath flavors are very. You're not going to eat that all by itself. Did you get but it? I feel like it's going to pull out flavors out of uh, other very things. savory things. Other things, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so on a spoon, not a good idea. <laughs> but um, with a little bit of charcuterie yeah. and some pickles and other things to balance it. Yeah, I think it, it will go with other flavors. What am I getting the heat from? Could have been coming from the mustard. Um, I think the turmeric is too much. Turmeric is one of those things that I like in very small quantities. So that is your bias. That's to my how bias. It should be. My bias. Okay, um, a little bit weird, but not uh, not horrible <laughs> and not unpleasant. Not unpleasant. I mean, it kind of. I mean, if you just took a scoop of mustard and or a scoop of regular tomato catsup, you wouldn't. You, you wouldn't. would be or ketchup, whichever you prefer. You wouldn't be like, oh, I'll give me another spoon. Okay, so eighteen ninety nine lemon ketchup. <sighs> Interesting. I think I, it would go with certain sausages really well. It would go with certain sausages. It yeah, would yeah. Go, it, 
So with certain things, I think this could be a winner. But that's like anything. I mean, I, I want to point out, you only eat ketchup with certain things. Yes. You only eat mustard with certain, certain things. things. So lemon ketchup only goes with certain things. We're just not sure which those are yet. We haven't tried. <laughs> so I guess over the next little while, we'll explore what lemon ketchup <laughs> goes with. Um, not a complete loser. I might try some of the other ketchups in this section over the next, you know, five or six months. Mushroom ketchup. Sounds really interesting. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.